Okay, so uh, second uh, session on, on seismic reflection. And um, so we're actually going to take the data now and, and make, a, make something that's, you know, has got a remote similarity to a cross section. That's the idea. You know, we take all these, all these records that we have and we try to end up with something that, that we could maybe interpret some geology on. That's the idea. So you should all have a, uh, a file on a flash drive. Um, and here's the, here's the files that you get from the reflection lab. And you see uh, you should have a JRG 500. So, uh, and you should be able to double click on the, on the JRG 500. And you'll get this kind of, this kind of thing. So we're basically going to get to the stage that we uh, that we were uh, at the end of part one, and and I'll try to take you quickly through uh, through you know what's what's left to do. There's basically three steps, and um, although there's step zero, we got to do first, um, and I'll try to take you quickly through those steps, show you what to do, and and. You know, make picks on sort of half the section, okay, and um, uh, and with that, um, um, I should be able to demonstrate everything, and then um, I'll let you, you know, each group actually finish off uh, finish off the uh, the picking process, and and there will be three products that I want, three of those. Um, of those uh, postscript uh, plots, um, and I'll just show you how to how to get those. And that's what that's what you'll email me. I don't know. Hopefully we can we can do this, uh, and you'll have you'll have them emailed at uh, three thirty, and then we can uh, you know I can look at them. And we can do the competition between uh, three thirty and four and get out of here on time. That would be nice. Um, so let's see how quickly I can uh, I can take you through this. So you want to double click on grg500.jar and um, and when you get that up you want to load your uh, a grg pack and wherever you come up in you want to um, go to your flash drive where you have the uh, you know where you just just double clicked on grg500 and this is the grg pack that you want so you have to double click on it. You go into it, and you double click on any of those files that are under there, and we get our reflection data. Okay. Um, now I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, go ahead and change it back to, um, and this is the raw data. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and change it back to the um, the grayscale display. Uh, so the first thing I'll do is I'll zoom it up a bit. Uh, just so you can see it better here, and um, uh, and then um, uh, and you know what uh, uh, you could do um, if it's easy enough, you could do uh, screen uh, screenshots too for the three products I want. That'll 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 work fine. Um, okay, so uh, I'll go to edit plot parameters. And uh, right, come on. Okay, there we go. It's all there. Um, and you see, it says color table for image. And there's a menu. And I'm going to pick seismic variable density. Um, and then apply changes. So now you can see the data. I think a little bit better, a little bit more the way we're used to, perhaps. Um, you can do this fine, uh, you know, even in uh, with with uh, like the uh, the seismic red, white, blue. That also works. Um, it's just I think it's going to be a little bit easier for me to explain it uh, with this color table. Okay. Uh, and then you know there are uh, twenty seven records I think in here, index zero through twenty six, um, and we're uh, and we've got. We're, we have a, a hammer uh, source which is actually pushing the cable. Every time the hammer moves forward, the cable moves forward too, uh, because we uh, um, the people I uh, 
uh, collected this survey with, they knew how to use their roll switch, and I don't know how to use mine. So um, that's what we're we the procedure we used is uh, um, last week. It's the one it's the one that I always use because uh, I haven't been able to get my roll switch to work right. But they knew how to use theirs, so uh, they could you know do a true roll long survey. So you can see that that each trace, the source for each uh, record, is just off the left side. It's like uh, one station off the left side. You can always see that first arrival heading right up towards the source, which is like right there. Um, and and so even though uh, it proceeded eastward across the beach towards the 27th record, uh, uh, the source receiver positions stayed relatively the same. Tyler, you had a question? Yeah, you know those um, um, those big uh, reflection cables we used. Uh, they actually have uh, like 256 conductors in them. You can string up to four of them together, I think, and so then you get um, uh, or more. Um, you string a bunch of them together, and then you can put your 48 active channels anywhere along. The uh, four times uh, um, four times uh, uh, twenty-four channels that you have, and so uh, the the roll switch is uh, is what goes between the um, um, uh, it goes between the 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 cable head that big round cable head and uh, and the bison, and it basically selects you know. How far up do you want to take those uh, forty-eight, those forty-eight channels that are that are that you have geophones at? So then, to move the array, all you have to do, you know, you just move it one geophone at a time. You 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 leapfrog it from the back to the front of the of the roll along array, uh, and that's the standard. It, well, it's been the standard procedure now. Um, now most surveys are three D, and they they actually tend to, you know, to lay out. All the geophones and then shoot through them just the way we did. Although we did it in 2D, we laid all the ge geophones and then we shot through them, um, and that's what they do in 3D now. Um, but um, uh, you know, for true 2D roll along, you need a roll switch, and I have one, but I I, I can't figure it out. <laughs> I suppose I'd give extra credit to anybody who did figure it out <laughs> and taught me how to use it. Um, okay, so so that's that's why this data set looks a little bit different from ours. You know, ours on ours as you scroll through it, you can you can see the you can see the the shot you know roll right through the array. Okay. Uh, all right, so we need a, a little bit of filtering. Um, so the first thing I'll do is on each vector BP filter. And uh, I'm going to apply a filter that, that works pretty well. Um, you know, we talked a lot about filters last time. So the low down is 30 hertz. The low up is going to be 100, which is actually the, um, I don't know, these, ge these might have been uh, lower frequency geophones. I can't remember, actually. Uh, the, let's try a high up of... Um, well, let's say 250, and so then the high down has to be 300. Okay, so yeah, I probably should have shaved it back to um, to 200 to uh, uh, you know 200 to 240, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, and there's notice that there's still a lot of amplitude change in here. Not as much as there was, okay. Um, so, uh, and we haven't eliminated all of the service ways. We haven't eliminated uh, all of the airway. That's still in there, but um, you know, we're seeing the the reflections more strongly than we were before. Here's here's one good reflection. There's other reflections up up further. Um, so I'm going to. Um, the next next piece of pre-processing is on each vector um, TE gain, trace equalization gain. We're going to give each trace the total, the same total energy um, on average. 
and so that that's uh, you know minimize the uh, the energy near the source. Now, just in case you know my computer runs out of battery or something, I'm going to save this, save it as a GRG pack, You're right in the same place, right? Yeah, that's where I am, um, and uh, I'll just accept the um, the uh, default um, name. Uh, and so now I have I have another you know this filtered TE gained um, um, is is another JRG pack here, so it's got all the stuff in it. Um, so now we're ready to uh, to do uh, normal move out NMO uh, velocity analysis. Um, so I want to keep that's why I say the JRG pack because all of this. The rest of the lab starts with the uh, with these records after filtering, after TE gain, um, and so I want to be able to get back to them uh, if I can. Uh, well, the first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to I'm noticing that most of the reflections are are in the first half second. The whole record is one second long, approximately. And those reflections are really in the first half second, at least the ones that I that I can see. So I'm going to, you know, for a little bit increase in speed, I'm going to discard the uh, the second half second. So I do that with on each plane, cut time, and you could do this just fine without doing this, but but you know, uh, just to follow me, you could do this. So um, the trace length now is going to be 0 0.5, which. Uh, which is in uh, seconds. Okay, zero point five traces are still going to start at zero seconds, and cut time. So now let's uh, increase the size of this. Okay, um, and maybe this is really what I want to save as a JRG pack. Okay, can do that. Fortunately, these don't take that much space. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. So how come? Looks like I got another error here. Let's see. Yeah. OK. And I'm having Java problems. OK. Java problems. Yeah. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> yeah, Java is giving me too much drama here. Okay. Well, I got my I got my menu back. You shouldn't have that problem on Windows. Um, all right. So we've got um, we've got the uh, uh, the the half second of data. That's what we're going to use. Um, you know, we can look at any any record we want. Uh, maybe I'll uh, I'll I'll lengthen it. I'll I'll go up to a little uh, little more vertical exaggeration. So vertical exaggeration, I'll multiply by two. And now, yeah, it makes it even a little bit clearer. You know, you can see the hyperbolic uh, shape of the reflections, like that one. Uh, and uh, maybe that's a reflection right up there. Okay. Still have a strong air wave. Um, maybe I should have cut it at uh, 200 instead of 250. Um, and that's, uh, but that's that's pretty good. Okay, so uh, this is what we're gonna what we're gonna start with now. And um, so the next method is uh, picking um, stacking velocities, and we're gonna do that from using a method called the CV stack. Constant velocity stack, and that's the method I use for crummy data sets like this that are in the um, uh, in the shallow subsurface, okay, or here in Nevada where we have lots of alluvium, um, or this noisy uh, beach data set. Um, for really good data sets, uh, the the much more industry standard procedure is called the velocity spectrum, 
And that's basically where you do an analysis of velocity for every every single uh, common midpoint gather. Okay, all of the traces that that are around one midpoint. All right, you know this is uh, these are shot gathers, right? These are all the traces that belong with each shot, so they're shot records. Uh, they haven't been sorted yet into common into common midpoint records, uh, but. Um, uh, the um, the velocity spectra doesn't work very well when you don't have really good data with lots of really clean reflections. Okay, this data ha set has some reflections, but they're not really clean. Okay, so the velocity spectra are, are a real mess. So for these near service data sets like what we get in in this class, I like to go with on each plane CV stack. Okay. Um, and then our final result is going to be produced once we've picked the velocities and figured out whether they're they're good enough. We uh, will use the CMP stack to get the final stack section, which is a thing that we'll try to geologically interpret. Okay, but for now it's uh, CV stack. So let's take a look at the um, at the dialog here. Um, we can verify several things. You know, I know this data set has a one millisecond time sample interval and this is telling me that's what it that is indeed what it thinks it is so that's good is telling me that uh, the offset range of the traces over the whole data set is eight meters to 192 meters and I happen to know that's true so um, um, that's uh, that's good you know and when you're when you're uh, processing our data you know it's gonna it's gonna take uh, a little while to get the geometry right and make sure that this comes out right uh, that the minimum and maximum offset. So this is like a final double check on the, that you've got the geometry right. Okay, uh, let's see. So we're going to stack all the time range we have, zero to half a second, and then um, the origin of our stack section is going to be at um, at uh, flag number three. Okay. Um, I think this had uh, flags, you know, that were just numbered, uh, you know, from one to uh, uh, two hundred or something like that. So, um, uh, flag number three is is going to be the origin of our section. Now, this line happens to be pretty straight, uh, and the lines we recorded in the field happen to be pretty straight. But um, you know, you don't have to have a straight line. Uh, you can um, you can have a line that uh, uh, that is curved. And then we can, uh, you know, make a make a section that takes the average through all the bends in the line, and uh, get a uh, uh, a cross section that way. Okay. And so we have to define where the section is going to be. Um, and so the uh, uh, why don't we start it at flag number one? Um, hopefully that's in there. Uh, we'll find out. Um, and then uh, this, uh, so we're making a midpoint line to stack into. And so the, uh, the midpoint line angle, M angle, is 90 degrees clockwise from north, which basically means the midpoint line points east. And that's correct. OK. Um, so this is, you know, it's giving guesses about what you're going to want. And I'm sure when you put in your, uh, you know, our data from last week, is going to give you some pretty wild guesses. It doesn't always give good guesses. Um, so I'll try to explain my way through this here. Uh, and setting up the midpoint line is really the main the main thing we're doing in here. Uh, so you know we happen to know that this survey uh, starts in the west and it goes straight east. At least that's the way we set up the coordinates for it. Um, and the interval between the midpoints is going to be the same. Um, as the interval between the geophones. Okay, so we're really having midpoint bins that are twice the size they could be. We could, you know, because the midpoint, uh, uh, you know, the midpoints are, are actually spaced at four meters, uh, but we want to we want to you know up the fold because it's a noisy data set. So we uh, we'll t we'll make our midpoint bins. Uh, at intervals of eight meters, which is exactly the same as the um, uh, for this survey as uh, the distance between the geophones, or the distance between the channels, 
Okay, so that's dm. And so then um, uh, dm times nm will give us the total distance that this uh, midpoint line will go. And I, I, I like to see some blank space you know, at the edges just to make sure I'm, I've got all the midpoints in there, getting all the data in. So uh, maybe I'll start with this at 45. Okay, and then I'll have to keep out to it'll remember this and, and we'll keep it consistent. Um, and even though it's a straight line, I still need to include the possibility that the um, you know the actual midpoint will be slightly off the line, and that's what the arc is. That's the sort of you know cross uh, you take the midpoint line and then perpendicular to that you could have a uh, uh, a point that's up to this uh, distance away. Or half this distance away from the line, and uh, it will um, it will still include that. Now, if you so you, you really have to play with this a lot if if you have a curved line, and you're you're trying to select your midpoints. Um, so that's um, uh, that's usually set to be uh, twice the dm, and so we can leave for this we can data set we can leave that uh, there. Okay, now the vo, nv, and dv. That's the essence of this CV stack process. What the CV stack process does is it makes a stack section. It does the common midpoint sorting. It does the stacking. Um, and it, it produces a section along that midpoint line uh, after you know, NMO correct, uh, doing the, uh, the NMO time correction and all that. Okay? Now, to do the NMO correction, you need a, you need a stacking velocity. Okay? And where do you get the stacking velocity from? Well. That's what we're really doing is we're determining stacking velocity. All right. So, um, uh, and how what how do we do that with a CV stack? Okay. So we're going to try stacking at trial velocities, and a whole range of trial velocities. And each um, each trial velocity is going to give us a separate uh, cross section. And then we'll go through that. You'll see it in great detail. And and we'll try to let the data tell us which velocities are right where, okay? Because you know velocity increases with depth, so not all the reflections are going to have the same stacking velocity. So we need to uh, we need to figure out what all that is, all right? Um, so uh, the lowest velocity that I'll stack at um, that's v zero. And since this is a beach, I, I don't think any of the velocities are going to be lower than a thousand meters a second. Okay, and I want to go up to a maximum of maybe um, uh, twenty-five hundred meters a second. Okay, in this uh, from my prior experience in, with this data set. So, um, and I'm going to take dv intervals of one hundred meters per second. Okay. And so if I go from 1,000 to 2,500 and I have 16 different velocity sections, NV is 16, then I go all the way from 1,000 up to 2,500 Okay, at intervals of 100, right? So um, uh, that's the, the, the critical thing here. You know, and if, I, if, I, if the real velocities are not included in the... Um, in the range of velocities that I use here, that I that I stack into, make all these trial stacks, then uh, then I won't determine the real velocity. Okay, so basically what this says is I'm doing 16 trial stacks. Okay, and they're going to start at um, at a thousand meters a second, and the next one is going to go up by a hundred. So there'll be a trial stack at a thousand, at eleven hundred, twelve hundred, and so forth, up to twenty five hundred. Okay. Uh, meters per second. So that's uh, uh, that's the procedure here. Uh, you know, it's a trial stack at a constant velocity, and and as soon as we actually get to, um, as soon as we pick that, uh, we could we could make a final stack, um, which is um, you know which which actually has a whole bunch of different velocities in different places in the in the section. That um, uh, that are the the velocities that each reflection stacks best at. Okay, so that's what we're doing here. We're looking for reflections, and we're gonna 
we're going to determine what velocity do we use to stack that particular reflection. All right. Uh, okay, so I think I've got all that filled out, and I'll push the CV stack button, and it came back pretty fast. Um, so the vertical, let's see, the um, uh, I want to go up to a zoom of two hundred percent, and this is what we're going to interpret for our um, for our uh, uh, stacking velocity. And maybe um, maybe I'll zoom. Try zooming up to five hundred percent. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I can interpret it at this large size, and um, and then uh, um, you know for plotting it out, I can uh, um, I can put it back down to uh, uh, the regular size. Okay, so so we're gonna work with this a lot now. Maybe I'll change it because uh, right, I went all the way to forty-five. Maybe I only needed to go to uh, to uh, um, to thirty. Maybe I only needed to go to thirty-five. No, nah, maybe um, maybe I should go to um, thirty-eight. I think I remember. Yours is uh, has frozen. <laughs> Anybody else uh, experiencing any problems? Of course. Well, let's see. I'm going to redo this and get rid of the blank traces. Right? Th these are midpoints for which, you know, there's no data. There's no source and receiver that give that midpoint, so they're blank. So I'll x out of that. I'll go back to the data. Um, oh boy. Let's see. Uh, okay, I got I got the uh, got the menu back. Uh, all right, so I go to methods on each plane, CV stack, and uh, instead of um, oh, now it's telling me it's guessing. Uh, oh, okay, it redid this. I want to go from VP one to uh, um, right. So I'll do thirty eight. Maybe see one blank trace. Let's see. Everything else stayed. DM arc one thousand sixteen times one hundred. Yeah, looks good. Okay. Now let's enlarge. Enlarge that. Okay, now I should be able to uh, scroll through this. So these sections are all the same, but each one is stacked with a different velocity. That's the only difference here. Um, and you, the velocity you can barely see over here on the upper left. That's the velocity of the section you're looking at. Okay. Yeah, I think my filtering uh, has a little bit too. I included a little bit too low frequency, a little bit too high. Um, so I've just made it slightly more difficult for myself. Um, so I'll I'll drag over here to the low velocity, and uh, but that's what what this procedure is all about. Um, the uh, the things that change, those are the reflections, right? You notice that that there's something that seems to be totally immune to whatever velocity I throw at it. This feature that's just below the top here, that doesn't change. That means it's unlikely to be a real reflection because it's totally insensitive to the velocity, right? Uh, you'll also notice that things change really fast with the lower velocities, and as you get to the higher velocities, you know they don't change as fast. So we, you know, at the higher velocities, we just don't have quite as much resolution, right? Um, so what's uh, 
you had a you had a dialogue back, but you're not getting the uh, stack section. We tried it twice. Okay. Just thinking about it. Right, right. Um, let's see. Yeah, you can't see the the Java errors. Yeah, that's way too long. Um, let's see. Did yours come up with a um, with a very very small DM or a very complicated DM value? Or is it did it is it eight meters? Yeah. Oh, your NV is zero. So you didn't you didn't ask for any uh, any stacks at all, and it didn't give you any, did it? <laughs> well, let's see if it works now. How many do you want to put in? Sixteen, right? You got a thousand. Yeah, with an interval of a hundred. All right. Okay. Problem solved. Way to go. Oh no. That's occurring on almost every uh, 
record in the somewhere in the record in the what we what we've got here is, is you've got a you've got a stack section which uh, <laughs> the, the axes are time of two way travel time so you know the more the time the more it's at and then this is an actual that axis is an actual location on the ground. And that's that, that's how it's labeled. Um, and it's along it's along a profile. Line. And, uh, a hit point Just one time. And then um, so you know we'll interpret this, you know, we'll say, all right, this reflection is at this time, it's at this location, it's at this time. And so uh, given whatever velocity we have for it, and, uh, you know, we can interpret the depth of the that, that's uh, the number of head. <laughs> So, what we're uh, uh, we see different at different velocities, you see different reflections in different places. So we're kind of that's, what you're that's what I'll demonstrate next. And our task is to, is to take a velocity of each of the actual reflections. And the, the things that are moving scroll through the different velocities. That's that's what our so let let me uh, let me talk to you a sec about about what we're what we're looking at here. Okay, so what I've got on the screen right now that's the you know the cross section the stack section. It's not really a cross section, but we could talk about it like that. It's a stack section as if the whole section had a constant velocity of twenty one hundred meters per second. Okay, so all the reflections have been corrected, right or wrong, uh, using the NMO velocity of, of the stacking velocity of 2,100 meters per second. Okay, and the next one down, you know, is at uh, well, I got I went two, I guess. Um, let's see, there's 2,000. Okay, and so this is the same section, same place. Um, but uh, assuming the stacking velocity of everything uh, was 2,000 meters a second, okay. So let me scroll over to the low velocities, all right, and I'll scroll up to like 1,400 meters per second, and you can see there's some strong reflections appearing, okay. Well, they're they're not only I'm looking really looking for two things. I'm looking for reflections that are strong, so they're black and white, right. Uh, that's that's strong amplitude, but also they're laterally continuous. Okay, so you can follow them, you know, for some distance. If we can see them over here on the left, and we can see them in the middle, maybe even on the right. Okay, so um, you know this shallow one uh, appears. Uh, um, so let me let me just look over here on the left at the at the at the shallow one. And, and sometimes I, I actually gotta, I got to put my finger on the screen, you know, just so I can make sure I'm looking at the same place, right? Um, I suppose I could put a post-it on the wall, right? Um, if anybody has a post-it. Oh, there's the there's the markers. I was going to say, just make Tyler point at it. <laughs> Not that always works. Yeah. We are Van Okay. So I'm going to look at I'm going to look at this reflection. Okay. Try to keep my eye focused on it, and um, and and let's scroll around the velocities a bit. Whoa, okay. Uh, so it's weaker there, and it's not as laterally continuous. And there, it's getting stronger, but it's you know at at eleven hundred, it's getting stronger, but it's still it's still not um, uh, it, you know it's not as continuous as it wa as it was at at 1400. Uh, 1200 is getting stronger still, but still you can see it's kind of broken up. Okay. 1300, whoops. Man, I, hard to get it. Yeah. Okay, there's 1300. Uh, it's getting pretty continuous, right? But it's still more broken up, right? We go to 1400 and it's, it's, a, lot, it's a lot smoother. Okay, now 1500. 
Well, I'm all the way to 1600. Okay, let's see. 1500. Actually, that's better. Let's see. Let me try to go down to 1400. Yeah, 1500 is a little bit better. See how see how continuous that is in there. Very nice. Okay, uh, 1600. I think it's starting to break up a little bit. Okay, although it's not much worse. Ah, 1600 or uh, what is that? 1800. It's it's really going. We didn't look at 1700. So so for that reflection, the best velocity, or the or another way to look at it. The lowest velocity at which it's it's good, okay, is fifteen hundred. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pick. I'm going to put a pick there. I'll actually put it in the white part up above. I'll put a pick there, in the in the CV stack. And I'm going to, but I'm only going to pick that reflection. On on this plane that has this velocity, only on the plane where you where you have uh, the right velocity for it. You know where it's strong and continuous. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, uh, so we've got one reflection picked, and so you know if I scroll through all the other uh, velocities, I should only see a pick, you know, in that circle, on that reflection at this one velocity. I should not have duplicate picks at different velocities. On the same reflection, okay, and and I'm going to go kind of column wise. You know, I this this data set you can easily divide it. We can look at at shallow and deep reflections on the left. We can look at shallow and deep reflections in the middle, and we can look at shallow and deep reflections on the right. So um, so what else do I see down further? Okay, notice um, the next reflection reflection I'm looking at. Is uh, this one? Uh, and what velocity is that good at? Okay. Okay, that's. It looks like fifteen hundred is too high. All right, twelve hundred is too low. Thirteen hundred, maybe. Fourteen hundred is pretty good. 1600 is too high, right? It's starting to break up. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and pick that one at 1400. Okay? Notice this one up here is not picked on there. That that wasn't the velocity for it. Okay, what else do I see in that column? Uh You know, at the, at higher velocity and velocity, well velocity should go up, right? I velocity actually inverted, right? The the deeper one had a lower velocity. That's that's possible, but um, it, it's not really normal. But I'll go with it for now. Okay. So the next one is is this one, and I think the next one after that I'll go for uh, this one. Okay. I'm still on that left column. Left column's pretty good. You can get you know maybe four or even five picks you know going down the left column. Um, okay, so the third one down right here, what velocity is good for that? Okay, two broken up. All right, that's getting pretty good at, what is that, 1900. Okay, 2000 is not that different, but I mean, certainly by 2300, 2400 is starting to disappear. So 2000, I like it best at 1900. So I'll pick it. There. Okay. Now the, the the lowest one, the deepest one. Let's see what that's like. That seems to be cleanest at sixteen. Yeah, seventeen hundred. It's pretty good. Yeah, that's 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 a little bit dimmer. At eighteen at eighteen hundred or nineteen hundred. So seventeen hundred there. So we got another velocity inversion. That's pretty weird. Um, okay, so now uh, you know on the um, 
what you're going to do is, uh, uh, but but not yet. I'm going to take you through the whole process first. Is you're going to um, you're going to um, look for other reflections, right? So in the middle, we've got one shallow, you know, and you get a turn of velocity for that. Uh, let's see what else we got. Looks like there's one right in there, but that's I don't know. There is something that focuses and defocuses right there, so right in here. Um, and is there one deeper? Maybe, maybe this one. You know, it's kind of weak, but but it's there. And then higher velocity, no. Okay, over on the right, we can get a couple of reflections like here. And. Um, And maybe here. And are we are we able to see anything below that? No. I don't think so. So really, you know, we're talking about maybe uh, nine nine picks, right? Uh, and each pick can be at a different velocity, but at each place you've got to have only one pick. All right. Now let's see. Let's see. Uh, you know, the I have these two velocity inversions, right? Got a velocity inversion there and a velocity inversion there. Does it work? Okay, and so we'll use the Dix equation to uh, figure that out. Um, so the first thing I need to do is get the uh, you know I made some picks in here, so I need to get the pick window, view the pick window. All right, and and all this you know the blank the pick window is blank because in this particular section I have no um, I have no uh, uh, no picks. All right, you can see there are picks appearing in uh, different sections, but I need to get all the picks, right? So um, I say uh, show all, okay? And so this window will pop up with all of them, and I'll, um, you know, right click or uh, or uh, control click. Let's see, no, at least on the. Um, well, I only have four picks. So I'm going to select all, and then copy. Um, let's see, and I can't do you, in in Windows. I know you can. You have a menu. You can uh, uh, your your right right clicks will bring up a menu there. Okay, so I'll just put that aside. Now, um, I can't go on from here. Okay. I have to start back with the uh, the original with not the original data but the the shot records, the filtered cut time shot records. So that's that's these ones. So I got to go back there, okay, and uh, and so methods on each on each plane, and there is a um, make vels. So we're going to make a a Dix. Interval velocity section. This will this will run the Dix equation for you, and point out the problems that you have. Okay, so uh, you know just because it breaks the Dix equation doesn't mean that it's wrong. You know we want to stack it in at whatever velocity makes it you know makes it continuous. But um, but at least we got to you know if the Dix equation fails, we should make note of that, and we might want to think about it. Okay. So okay, the Makevels dialog. It's got all the same stuff as the CV stack, except we got to change it, you know, to uh, VP zero equal to one, and NM. Uh, what was I using? Um, Thirty-eight, I think. Thirty-eight. Uh, DM is eight. Wasn't it sixteen? Uh, sixteen was the number of velocities, so that's down here. Oh. But actually, I only want one. This will this will give you a whole range of of, of Dick's uh, uh, interval velocities. Um, yeah. So so I use thirty eight. I think uh, if you use forty five, continue to use forty five. Um, and and make sure that NV goes to one. Okay. And not. Uh, I don't want to look at the interpolated NMO velocities. I want to look at the Dick's interval velocities. And run the Dix equation. So we do make vels, 
And um, well, that's interesting. I get all one color. Oh, oh, I, I missed a crucial step. Sorry. Okay. Got to go back to that. Back to the shot records, methods, uh, make vels on each plane. Make vels. Okay. Uh, Thirty-eight and one up here. Man, there's a lot of trouble. Uh, Dick's interval velocities. NV is still one. That's good. And now in here. You know, I want to select all this, uh, which I can't do too easily. But so I'll select all that, and I will uh, paste in um, the picks from here. Okay, there they are. That's that's the step I missed. So um, okay, so so uh, what you guys are going to do is, you know, I only picked one column from the CV stack. You're going to try to pick three columns, get nine, you know, nine picks, nine reflectors with their velocities picked. Okay, and and then uh, I don't want to see the picks. I want to see the the Dick's interval velocities. From that's so this that's product number one that I want you to email me. Um, so let's uh, let's get that. Let me get that and and I'll show you what to what to send to me. Um, so we have uh, uh, make fells and NV equals one. I I put in the picks I've made. You know, hopefully you'll have nine or ten or whatever. Dick's interval velocities. Uh, NM is 38 for me. VP0 is 1. I think we're good. Okay. So um, uh, now I'll. Uh, now, now, the Dick's interval. Now, now, you'll get more complicated sections, right? I only picked one column, so I only have one column. You know, it's a, it's a 1D velocity solution. This, you know, this is on the same field, right? This is exactly the same. Um, uh, so actually, I should make it. Um, uh, I should zoom it up to the same as the as the CV stacks, because it's on this. It's on the same axes, okay? But I, I'm not going to do that because that's too. That's a little too hard. Um, so I'll zoom it back down to 200 percent. Okay, now. There's two things to check in the make vels in, in, in the Dick's interval velocities. Okay, the first one is what down here on the scale bar, you know, and in red is the maximum velocity. What is that maximum velocity? Okay, and here it's uh, twenty-one ninety-three point five. That's not bad. Okay, I mean that's that's even that could even be a stacking velocity in this data set. So that, but you may, you know, depending on what you do, how you pick, you might, you might get a maximum velocity that's twenty thousand meters per second. You know, that's the p velocity of the, um, uh, I don't, I think, uh, not even the lower mantle. That's like the p velocity of the Earth's core, inner core. Okay. Now that could be right. That could be what gives you the best stacked image. But you know, you want to take note that it's, you know, it's giving you a ridiculous Dick's interval velocity. Okay, um, so that's the first problem to check for. The second problem is how low do the velocities go? And notice I have this blue band here. Okay, uh, and I, I want to see well what velocity did I get? You know, it's somewhere down here, less than a right. If I go halfway down the color scale, I'm at a thousand or eleven hundred, and so in the blue, I'm at like five hundred. You know. And and this is at a beach, so the p velocity really, you know, if it's as low as a thousand, that's kind of weird. But uh, I sure wouldn't expect uh, I sure wouldn't expect uh, uh, rocks at uh, um, at that depth. 
uh, you know, which is about 50 meters depth at a beach, to be so so far below the water velocity. Well, let's see what velocity we got. Uh, so I've got a you know in the make valves I've got to view its pick window. Okay, and I'll make a pick there in the blue, and the very first number that comes out that's that's the velocity. And that's just too low. 650, that's too low. So, so I'm going to, that, that's, a, that's a problem. Um, you know, you're going to turn in, OK. So you're going to turn in this make vels. Um, and I, if it's easy, just make a, a screen capture of uh, a print screen of, of this right here You know that shows where the, uh, I can barely see where the pick is right there. And, and this shows the value. Right, and that's the problem with this with this section, okay? With the with the velocities I picked, you know, that's a that's a problem, okay? So uh, uh, so your first uh, uh, your your first product identifies the problems, okay? And um, if if you if if on your first set of picks you don't have problems, that might mean mostly that you don't have enough picks. Okay, or or you're being a little bit too biased and trying to control your picks too much. All right, so I want to see problems on this first on this first image you turn in. Okay, and I want to see I want to see that you've identified the problem. You have velocities that are too low. You have velocities that are too high. Okay, so this is what this you know a screenshot right here. That's what I'd like to see. So I'll I'll go ahead and make one myself. Uh, Command Shift three on the Mac. Okay, so I got one. Um, okay. So now let me show you how to fix the problem. All right. Now, now where did this problem come from? It comes from my picks, right? Where where I have. Um, a velocity inversion that's down here, right? That that blue band is in between those picks. Okay, that blue band is in between those picks, and um, let's see. Here's the time, and there's my deepest pick. Um, so there's a pick in here that's too low, and that's my deepest pick. Okay, um, and and remember I picked uh, 1700 there, and I'm sorry I picked uh, 1900 up here, and 1700 down here, and I can go back. Uh, so now we're working on the second product now. Okay, I can go back and say, all right, what if I, all right, I'll go up to uh, 1700. There's my pick on the deeper reflection, and I go up to 1900. There's my pick on the shallower reflection. So that's where the uh, the velocity inversion comes in. Okay. So let's see. How do I? I could resolve that by um, raising the velocity of this pick or lowering the velocity of this pick, or I could split the difference. Maybe maybe that is better at a wait a minute. Let's see. So I need to lower the velocity of that pick. And I think it's pretty good. It, it's pretty good at 1700, right? So okay, I'll I'll go ahead and pick it at 1700. Um, and and uh, you know then you got to go through and and let's see. Let's get the pick window here. But you don't you don't have to do this, right? So these are the picks I want. They're at 1700, and if I go to 1900, okay, there's the pick I don't want, right? So I could I could uh, wipe that out and say uh, refresh. Okay, it's disappeared, and now we've got the picks on the third reflector at 1700 and the fourth reflector at 1700. That should solve the Dix problem, okay? Um, but notice all I have to do is in this text in this pick. Text. All I have to do is uh, uh, so I'm going to I'm going to copy it again, okay. And if I just there's the velocity. If I just change the velocity that picked to 1900, then uh, that's all I have to do, okay. 
So, uh, all right, let me go do that. I, I want to get another Dick section with this uh, with this problem resolved. So I got to go back to the uh, to the shot records, the filtered shot records on each plane. Uh, make vels, go through the same rigmarole. VP zero is one, NM is thirty eight. Um, Dick's interval velocities. Make sure the NV is one. And uh, I'm going to expand it a little bit and um, and select everything there and paste in the picks. Okay, these are the old picks. Right there is the 1700 that I, I need to change to 1900. Okay, just change it like that. Just change it right there. That's all I need to do. All right, and if I get everything else right, I can get another make fells. Okay, and so here it is. Um, and now I can see I, I don't have any I don't have any drastic low velocity zones. There's nothing blue in here. The high velocity is is still adequate. It's fine. It's not too high. Um, and uh, and so I, I want to get a screenshot of this uh, just to um, that's the second product. Okay. All right. So. Um, now let me show you how to make the third product. Okay. Well, I'll get I'll get I'll get my screenshot. Okay. Um, the third product, uh, we get um, we get from from again. We start with the uh, the records, the shot records. Okay. We go to methods uh, on each plane CMP stack. So we're going to get the final stack now. Okay, we've we've monkeyed with the velocities, uh, we've we've made them uh, better, uh, you know, using the Dix velocities. Okay, um, so uh, uh, again here it's the same thing. Got to go through uh, VP zeros one, NM. I'm using thirty eight. Okay. Uh, DM and ARC are okay, and there's no NV in here to check. And I want to put all my, I want to select all that, and paste in my picks instead. Got to remember, I had to raise that one. Okay, I want to use my final set of picks, and hit CMP stack. Okay. Um, now let's see. Uh, so now it's on the same axes, and uh, so all all four of these reflections are as good as I can make them. It, they're still circled on the on the wall, right? There's now they're all each every every one of them is as good as I can make them. Okay, um, let's see. Let me put this back over here. You know. On the constant velocity stacks, you can only get you know one good at a time, maybe two. So that's what the CMP stack does. It takes your velocity picks, and it makes them all as good as you can make them. Okay. So actually, and 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 then we'll uh, uh, we'll talk about the interpretation when I see your sections because we need to stack this in better over on the right hand side here, and then I can then I can make a more sensible interpretation. All right, so you guys want to give me those those? Oh, I'm sorry. One more step. One more step. Um, I want to know. I want to know um, how deep this this section is. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it back to. Uh, 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 I'm gonna view it back at uh, at 200 percent. Okay, just so I can see the whole thing. All right. You know what? I want to know what the depths are in this in this section. Okay, it's still labeled in time. Okay, um, so uh, uh, um, the uh, uh, all right. How do I? You know what? How do you convert from time to depth? Well, you need the velocity, right? Okay, so we got a two-way travel time at the bottom of the section that is half a second. 
Okay, it's 0.5 second. All right, and and my first question is, how deep is that? Okay. Um, and uh, uh, and so. Um, uh, you take the two-way travel time, and you divide it by two. You get a one-way travel time, right? So instead of a half second, I got a quarter second. Okay, and then uh, you multiply that by the, your deepest stacking velocity, which is usually your highest stacking velocity. And I still have these picks here. My well, my highest stacking velocity is not nineteen hundred anymore. It's seventeen hundred. Now you may get you may get a different velocity here. All right. Um, so uh, seventeen hundred. Um, uh, times one quarter, right? Is uh, uh, what is it? Um, what was that again? Thank you. So uh, four hundred and twenty-five. Meters? Is that right? Let's see. We have a quarter second times uh, 1,700 meters per second. So uh, yeah, yeah, 425. OK. Right. Um, so Uh, what I so so uh, now let me show you how I would how I would uh, um, label this uh, this stack, and let me get back to the the C, the CMP stack. No no, where I got to go to the menu. Uh, CMP stack, it's that one. Okay, so I want to label this in depth instead of time now using that velocity. And it's not going to be perfectly accurate up here where the velocities are lower. But at least we can get a sense, right? It'll be good from certainly the depth will be good from here down. And what I really want to know is what is the depth of the uh, of the deepest reflection you've got, okay? That you have picked, okay? Which I, for me was that one. All right. So I got to relabel. I got to relabel this, and let me show you how how to do that um, with a depth scale. So I'll go to Edit Plot Parameters. And then uh, I'll go to um, elements delta. Let me drag that over where I can see it. Okay, elements delta, one millisecond, right? So every time sample is um, is one millisecond. Well, then my question is, how much depth is that? Okay, how much depth is that? So uh, well, the point one second is a is a two way, is a uh, you know point one second between samples. Well, that's two way travel time between samples. So I can do the same thing. I can multiply half of that, okay, half a millisecond, times uh, seventeen hundred, and uh, I got to do that uh, with a calculator. So seventeen hundred. Uh, times 0 0.0005 seconds is 0 0.85 meters. Okay, so 0 0.85 um, meters. Oh, 0 0.85, and then the axis units become depth. In meters, uh, and then I hit apply changes, and uh, so now there's that 425 meters at the bottom. Okay, so um, you know, and that's that's assuming a lot. And then I pick the deepest reflector I have. Okay, and I um, and I'll put it. Um, uh, I'll, I'll view the pick window for the stack, right? And um, let's see. And I had an old pick on here. Um, so I'll say um, resample. Yeah. Okay. So this one didn't change because that's a new pick. 
So 174 meters is is as far as my interpretation goes. That's the depth of that reflection. Okay, that's the depth of that reflection. So so now I'll get a a, a screenshot of this. Okay, I've got the depth labeled axis, and and somebody tell me is this is this section anywhere near uh, one to one? Is it you know five times vertically exaggerated? Is it horizontally exaggerated? What 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 do you think this section is? Sorry. Uh, maybe close, right? This distance across the top of this square is is not a square, but close. Is three hundred four meters, and then that's uh, four hundred twenty meters of depth. So, yeah, about one and a half. So, uh, um, yeah. So now you can you can write your uh, you can write your depth of the deepest reflector you pick on a card, or you can you can get a screenshot like this. You know that shows the uh, the depth after you label the axis, okay, and that's that's the third product, okay. I don't know if I got a screenshot. Okay, there it is. Um, all right, so you guys want to um, you guys want to go until three forty five? Okay. <laughs>